Brett Pritigan at the Salt Lake Tribune. We're here today on Parker Mountain where pronghorn transplant is taking place. We're going to take about 300 animals out of here today, believe it or not. Right now they've, uh, they're moving them into trailers after bringing them into the corral by helicopter. It's a loud, crazy operation. Lots going on. The muggers go in, bring out the animals, tackle them, bring them, put them in the trailer and set them on their way to places like northeastern Utah, southern Utah, Arizona. It's a crazy time. It's, you see that they're working hard to get the animals. It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit strenuous on the animals, but they do it in the, in the winter so that they're a little bit cooled down and not overheating. game transplants are important and why you guys are involved in it. Well basically the the main reason we do transplants is to get animals into areas where the habitat exists but there's no animals there. Either they were you know extirpated by hunting or other reasons, disease or whatever. So if we have good habitat for that species and we think they can thrive there, we would like to get uh, populations established in those areas. Uh, and another reason is supplementing some populations that may have, uh, through drought years, have, have declined. Uh, so we, we can supplement those populations and give them a, uh, basically a kickstart to get populations up and running again. For two years in the mid-1960s, wildlife officials from Utah released 129 pronghorn antelope caught in Montana on Parker Mountain near Bickman. The herd eventually became the most prolific in the country and has since produced more than 4,700 animals from transplant efforts. Despite that large number of departures and a generous amount of hunting permits, the Booker Mountain herd remains approximately 500 animals over its population objective. The herd has helped reestablish and augment pronghorn herds across Utah and the West. Excluding a privately held herd on Antelope Island, the first bison in Utah's post-pioneer era arrived in 1941 when 18 caught in Yellowstone National Park were released in the Robbers Roost Canyon of the San Rafael Desert south of Hanksville. Another five animals were added in 1942. The herd eventually moved to the Henry Mountains. Division of Wildlife Resource officials plan to move at least 25 bison from the Henry Mountains to the Book Cliffs in eastern Utah in January 2009. There is controversy on whether or not mountain goat are native to Utah, but there is no doubt that they do well here. Wildlife officials introduced six mountain goat from Washington to the Lone Peak Wilderness Area on the Wasatch Front in 1967. At least seven other projects were conducted with Washington goats. Now, more than 225 have been brought to Utah or moved within the state. Utah's latest and greatest wildlife export is moose. Almost 100 have been captured with a net gun fired from a helicopter and almost hobbled and flown to a loading site for a trip to Colorado and their new home since 2005. High moose numbers in the state mean more transplants in the future. The three subspecies of bighorn sheep in Utah were nearly extirpated by overhunting and disease with the arrival of the pioneers and miners. Massive efforts to restore desert, Rocky Mountain, and California bighorn have taken place since 1966. More than 1,600 have been moved into and around the state. Bighorn are probably considered the biggest success story of the recent transplant program. Utah is scheduled to get another 60 Rocky Mountain bighorn from Montana in January 2009. They will be released near Duchesne.